Alright, I am the back. I'm a bit back, so. These are the bits of your life. Um. Mm. Come on. Where is it? Where the fuck is it? Come on. Fucking. Where? Oh, where? Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> right, okay. No, that's for the endings. Mmm, fucking where? Oh, it might be one of these. Ah, oh, here it is. Alright, uh, fight. Two, six, four, one, three, five. Anyone's gonna get punched, it's probably better than you. They'll probably get lucky, but I'm just kicking the... Yep, standing by. Good evening, I'm Eamon Tyke. Behind me is a true TV legend. Now running for Prime Minister, everyone's handiest man, Peter Clement. Now, Peter thinks he's here tonight to record a special reunion edition of Just a Job, but as always, viewers, you know better. Ten seconds, places. It's time. Let's start the show. In five, four, three. When you're feeling restless and you just can't stay the course, I got your Show me again, just that was, I'm not really good at those ones. Thank you, girls. Cracking stuff. Good evening, friends. And yes, it's true. I can hardly really believe it myself. But we are back with this. Dave's episode. house of pain. Hello, Eric. Right, okay. Welcome to Bits of Your Life, team. Um, now, both Eamon and I were hoping to pop up and see you earlier, but, well, time got away from I could hear Eamon talking to you, Eric, on the feed. So, you heard all of that? Yep. Okay. Um, bear with me? Then stand by, Eamon. Go, Eamon. Tonight to record a special reunion edition of Just the Job. But tonight, Peter Clement, these are the bits of your life! Yeah. Let's get you back to the studio, you fuckers. 
Okay, yeah, I October really 10th, 1923, northern town of Rothering, Fanny Martin Clement. I know, right? Fucking tear away the made of you. That's right, they got up at the crack of dawn to make the journey down to the capital by coach. No, I didn't. It's your infamous old man. No, it isn't. And her long-suffering husband, Fanny and Martin Clement. <laughs> Let's just stick to the script, see what happens. You pop your piece in there and then head over to the sofa. Right here, pet. Hello, pets. Make the best of us. And not the worst. Chelsea, bloody bugs. Hey, pizza, bloody Clement. <laughs> oh. <laughs> OK, lovely, lovely. Let's all take a seat now. That's great. So, um, lovely to have you both here. Uh, let me ask you, um, what was life like for Peter growing up in the Clement house? Fucking hell. Uh, well, I think, well, for both of us, really, it was, a, well, it was about his father's, right? I mean, mine, well, he were never there because, well, what with work and run the pub, of course. But I reckon that were a lot easier than it were for our PT because he's no mark of a father. We're always there. Ah, uh, me ma'am kept him in line most of the time. Yeah, she did, love. But, I mean, I mean, what, what about when she went to bingo or... Oh, you know, when she took that part-time evening job. I kept it easy. I Six. Make up for the lack of love. Sorry, guys. Are, I keep right? doing this. But Every time I'm it's just DLC. Say this, look, but Pete here, well, he, he spent his whole life trying to make up for the lack of happiness. Oh, that's not fair. I had a good childhood, for the most part. You didn't, Pete. Uh, sorry, but I'm neither of us did. Well, that got serious quickly. Uh, Chelsea, what's your name? Chelsea Bonds. Do you want me number? Chelsea Bonds, everyone. It was, it was five, right? All right, I just need another recap. It was six. Okay. Okay. Elementary, but already you had 
quite the reputation as a ladies' man. Who's this, Peter? Well, if you don't know my voice by now, we may well have lost the election. Well, it's Julia Salisbury. No, it isn't. It's your childhood sweetheart, Chelsea Bond. <laughs> <laughs> Something's gone wrong with the scheduling. Some prick called the day, apparently. Shall we? Yet more anger. Chelsea. Julia. That says Chelsea in the script. Would you like to call me Chelsea? Would you like to call me Chelsea? <laughs> Actually, yeah, that'd be really helpful. Right. Excellent. So, Chelsea, let me ask you this. What do you think we could see in Peter way back then that could have predicted his path to household name and now aspiring prime minister? Well, I mean, obviously, I wasn't there, of course. You're one of his childhood sweethearts, Gordon Scribd. Seems unlikely, given our ages. <laughs> For he was this game. Can you talk about it anyway? What um, is it now? Is it far? Is it Ivan Vodovich? It is Ivan Vodovich. Oh, there we go. Okay. Well, uh... I would imagine that, uh, that Peter was, was quite charming in his heyday and, and probably left behind a, a trail of broken hearts. Oh, just a couple. And I regret them both an enormous amount. Oh, how romantic! Julie what was it? Julia Hande? <laughs> what did it say? Julia Handberry or whatever? Before we bring our next guest on, let's have a look at a classic clip from Just the Job. It's on that monitor there, monitor there, Peter, if you'd like to take a look. And that's about two minutes. So I'm going for a closer look, see if it cheers me up a bit. Okay. I remember this one, LJ. Oh so no, we're supposed to make him angry, Good aren't we? Choice, Eric. <laughs> Not my choice, if I'm honest. Can we reset, please? According to the script, it's little Jimmy Chisel next, Eric. Little Jimmy Chisel? I keep telling you, Eamon, I'm not in charge of that. God's sake, how hard can it be? I mean, they're all out there. The guests are in the holding area. In the right order. In the right bloody... One, two, three, four, five, six, Order. One, two, three, four, five, six. You count them in. I know, Eamon. I One, two, three, four, five, six, Eric. We'll be right now. Two, six, four, one, three, five, or whatever <laughs> random gobbledygook happens to spill out of your head. Ten seconds, everybody. Little Jimmy Chisel, please, Eric. Okay, we're going in five, four, three. What fantastic memories there from one of the nation's most beloved TV shows. Now, Just the Job had two successful runs, of course, from 58 to 64, and again from 1972 to 1976. And across many, many of those shows, there was always one man by your side. That's right, a man who needs no introduction, but we're giving him one anyway. It's not your sidekick of almost 13 years, little Jimmy Chisel. It's some sort of bloody yeti. Give us a unique insight into this bit. Yeah, 
Be right back. My throat is dry. It's dying. Stop, because I'm thirsty. It's because I've just eaten some up. Sick. I've eaten some and it's like I've eaten my 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 tea and then it's like I've eaten it like in an awkward way. Be right back. Let me just open this shitty broken door. All right, I'm back. Uh, 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 you know? Uh. Okay. Um. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Stop the theatrics and pour the bloody drinks. <laughs> Surprised they let you into the studio with that, you know. I thought there would have been uh, some sort of search or something. You don't search an ambassador, pal. Anyway, he's got diplomatic immunity. You can cut your tongue out and they couldn't touch him. What the hell is that? Only one, yes. Like village sex cult. <laughs> I don't even want to know what that means. Oh, he's having a drink. Oh, Jesus, erase your quick sniffing Christ, Simon. What the hell is that? That, Peter Clement, is the reason you wake up in the morning in cell facing firing squad, yes? <laughs> oh, no, no. Oh, let's just, give us just, just a minute, pal. That first one is still stripping the skin off my stomach. Peter Clement and I fight in war together, deathly man. Ah, the units are in Tonislava. We were ambushed. Smoke is everywhere. Um. It's burning my eyes. I'm separated from my squad. Lost in fog. Okay, uh. I hear bullets. It's one next. Whiz past the ear. Wearing mask. The smoke is not just smoke, you see, it's a poison gas. You come over to me. Take off mask and put on my face. 
You lead me out of fog. We share mask, pass back and forth. You bring me to cellar under shop. We collapse there, coughing out knock from lungs and cry. Five days we were there, and what we could find. Mainly dog food. And a tin of peaches, but we did spill most of it, fine over it. Morning of sixth day, all is quiet about. We venture out. No one is there. It's like, uh, how you say it? Ghost town. Ghost town. Nothing but corpses. <coughs> Sinners. <coughs> Difficulty is gone. We fight to death over small town and nobody wanted anyway. Didn't even find out who won that day. Nobody did. Everybody lose. Except maybe us. For nearly four weeks crossing country before we got to command. By the time we reached it, we'd had a few scrapes. And we knew we'd be friends for life. Oh, forms up. So, what are the differences, would you say, between the on screen and off screen versions of Peter Clement? Simple. On screen, Peter Clement never had to kill anyone. Ah, yes, and actually, we've got some archive footage here which shows exactly what we're talking about. Oh, dear God, I hope we don't. Uh, <laughs> let's go to that now, shall we? Well, when it's a diddly task, I know a little fella who's just the job. Let's turn to my trusty seven inch. Um, my trusty. Uh, who's been messing with my tools? I'm not kidding, Frank. Someone's been messing with my tools. He should be here, she should be there, and this fella's all wonky look. Do something. Who's been at my tools? Well, viewers, I think we've all learned something today. Don't get plastered at lunchtime. Oh, shite. No, no, we're never going to learn that. Hey, viewers. No. What I've learned today is always set your toolbox back from the edge of the shelf. Can't be misfiling the engine next, honestly. Oh, he's proper show that, Eric? What? Seven years of footage, and you show a clip that makes you look like... <laughs> oh, he's proper angry now. Why did you show that, Eric? What? Seven years of footage, and you show a clip that makes me look like a complete prick. It's a very human moment. Okay, well, Doc and I went for some fights and chases with a bullet Don't ambush me, Eric. I'm not in the fucking mood. The unpredictable drink. You try. Uh, no, I, I think it'll probably kill me. To be fair, I was pretty pissed that day. I was dodgy Is it I one now? Just being safe. Just being safe. Is it fucking one or is it fucking seven?
It's one. Oh boy, his dad's gonna get him angry now. Friend, anger is how we survive. Mislava, I'm too old for anger. And yet it's still locked within you. To the blood in us all. <laughs> In 1941, here is the current. It's me, ma'am. Your mom. Who's next? Let's just let's just make him angry about playing the if I don't play playing this. But he was hugely roaring at the gym. Roaring loved in the country. I saw that. One morning I had Dorothy and Peter absolutely screaming at each other in her office. Please. Oh. Even with the door shut, you could hear the swear words. Actually it wasn't uncommon. Peter and Dorothy 
Miss Hammerman had a very uh, direct relationship. Are you taking Jeff really won't lie there? Are you really trying to piss me off now? Anyway, I don't after choose. ten minutes... Yeah, I remember he fucking days. He slams the door. Can we reset everybody? Tim Hill. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be fine. Good. Just don't bring that next guest Polly on. Should I say, guest studio sure down. to be a bit of a handful. Expect the unexpected. From Tim Hill and Polly. <laughs> That's your chair, Johnny Johnson. She feels sorry for Mrs. C. Right. Obviously, we've had to drop the signal there. So, so next you is supposed to be. Dorothy Hammerman, but I can officially reveal. And the odds are coming through that exclusive. entrance are. Tim Hill got a black eye. Experience. Tim Hill got a black eye. 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 Tim Right, when you zoom in on the pad like that, the whole well, rest how of the game pauses, so you've got a little bit of time to think. Okay, I don't know so Peter drinks Kelly, Peter argues Kelly, Peter's so unhappy at the end, Peter angry at the end. Someone else did all the work, didn't they now? What are you trying to say, Eamon? All that pissed me off and all. Are you calling me an ingrate too, pal? No, no, not at all. How do I actually... Don't bother want me to come over there. No, 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 you're fine where you are. No, don't bother. Maybe have a nice coffee. Yeah, Eric, can we get him a coffee? You want to watch your... Wait, is that the Jimmy Chetta? Fucking m... Oh, no, pal. <laughs> right, Jar, yeah. Who's out there, for Christ's sake? Show me up. Oh, thank Christ. Is that the Jimmy Chesel? <laughs> you are fired. Boss? I'm a fan. Oh, dear. Sorry to hear that. Oh, really? Is it safe now? Calm down. Oh, no, good, Eamon. Great, 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 super lovely, very fantastic, super great, really, really good, great. great. Eamon, for fuck's sake, ask a question. Uh, uh, so, uh, PT ran for nearly six years. What are your favourite memories from all those shows? Really? That's what it says on the screen. What was my favourite moment from Pete? Yeah. A show I wasn't in and never watched. Yeah. Well, I imagine it was some lumbering turd of a show that somehow got by on what others would call that Peter Clement charm. Nice. I imagine Pete was a drunk throughout and uh, a bully to his co-workers. Where's all this coming from, Jim? It's just Jim, OK? Just fucking Jim. It's fucking hard, is it? You might want to moderate your tone. Oh, what? You put a fucking hammer through my foot again. That was just a laugh. You found it funny at the time, I remember. No! You found it funny, you cunt! I think an apology is owed. Little Jimmy Chisel, everybody! Sorry. Fucking amazing stuff, guys. Little Jimmy Chisel, everybody! And that brings us to last year when you surprised the whole country by announcing you were giving it all up to form a new political party. Uh, and because the final part of this of your life is always the future... I think your future might involve stitches, darling. OK, that's Dorothy Hammerman. Dorothy Hammerman, everybody! Hey!
Maybe it's called Bob Bozeman. Why was there a phone on? Why was there like a phone on the bottom screen? In the next millennium. So let's get on with it, shall we? <sighs> Question, Eamon. Well, we're we're so delighted you could. Ah, uh, uh, no, 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 we we don't need that. Ah, uh, um, do you think uh, Peter Clement is a good fit for politics? I don't do politics, darling. You know that. Fantastic. Well, we've got a real treat coming up. Four or five years. But before we do, let's take a look at the current. Hey, is it always the same with you lot? Every four or five years, you come around telling us what we want to hear. You talk about stability, you talk about hope, you talk about trust, and then one of your wings, and it doesn't really matter which one. To be honest, when you get on with your life, and nothing, fucking nothing changes. Well, very passionate. It's totally inaccurate. Yes, I agree with Jake. Yeah, of course you do. That's your bloody problem. Your passion is so infectious, so attractive. The polls tell us that. But where does that passion lead? How will your passion help when our neighbours are laughing at your ridiculous monetary policies? When you bankrupt the nation, what do your passion do then? Why is it showing me a camera randomly? And start a war, I wonder. I am the only man on this stage who has actually fought in a war. Perhaps you should remember that. What we offer in our party is moderation. We won't make the radical changes that Mr. Clement's party promises, but that's because, well, we rather like this country as it is. Yes, there are inequalities that need easing and yes mr hamilton man and i disagree on how much should be spent on health policing and of course education but where we agree and why this country has lasted is that we know change must be slow slow and consensual you have to take the public with you the public are with us. <laughs> For now, for you. Wait till the media start pecking at you. Wait till the gloss comes off your shiny utopian policies. And yes, honeymoon periods only last so long. Eh? We will create a destination. Well, in your five short weeks, you'll find one of those wars hold for us. Christ, I hope not. But tonight, in a private, these are the myths of your life. Take it away, boys! Said, would you fuck it up? No, fucking much. Ask on, and let's just do the song of the gods. You've been fencing there. This is amazing.
melting stone the generations like bloody mold. You bully me, I bully him, and this, oh, this is where it all ends up. I'm sorry, man. This is all father. Oh, stop making a fuss, Martin. It's not the first time, and it won't be the last. After all, if you stick your cock through a hole, you can't be complain about what sucks in, as they say at the town hall. Look around you, mate. Look at it! Bits of your life. Fucking joke! You want me to go after him? No, 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 mate. We're, we're not in Conoslava, no. Message just go somewhere and just pass out. Good idea. Splendid shot. I go vomit. I think we'd better get you boys looked at. Yes, yes dear. We have a medic over here. Oh. Okay, great. We do a song. Okay, right, we'll do the song. Oh, yes, him and Pet. Come on, let's do the song. Yes, yes, the song. I want to be bittersweet. I really should get back to campaign. We're going to do the bloody song. I've had a knife put to me throat, so we're doing the bloody song. Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll do the bloody song. Thank you. Bring it in, boys. Okay, uh, we're doing the off cue there. See, you know, we all just sing it together. Okay, right? Okay, here we go now. I didn't even applaud. And we're out. Right, God, everyone still alive? Why did you do the song? I thought if I didn't show my dad, I might finally get home to my many children. 6.30 a.m. in my offices, please, gentlemen. We've got future to plan! I, I wake up at like 5. 6.30 in the morning! Is she not sleeping? All right, all right, slow and steady wins the race. He's such a sweetie when he his but a scrap. In short, Peter Connor gets ends up in a fist fight. Boop, boop, do, 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 Jimmy Chisel is the stage name. Yeah, this is definitely the uh, best deal fee. Dave was not wrong about that, I'll tell you that. Oof. Alright, let's, um... Hmm. Let's go for path three. I don't go more 
Jackson's, not Sainsbury's, or Asda, or Aldi, or Safeway. Chilling out in aisle three, that's the life for me. But I'd rather have a jacket potato. Jacket potato, jacket potato, jacket, 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 potato. Jacket potato, jacket potato, jacket, 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 potato. Hello, my name's Kenny. So he's just straight up self aware about absolutely everything. <laughs> Fuck the logic. Fuck. I don't care if it's meta or not. Let me just do it real quick because I'm. I'm the best character game. Fanny, 
Mark the clever. Two me out. That's right. They got up with a crack of dawn to make the trip all the way down to the capital by coach. It's your infamous old man and her long-suffering husband, Fanny and Martin Clemmer. Uh, who's next? Uh, right, yeah, uh, let's... Jimmy Chisel Path, number four. Uh, yeah. Uh, lovely to have you here. Uh, so tell us, what was life like for Peter growing up in the Clement house? Well, obviously I wasn't there for it, I mean, but I spoke to Peter's brother a lot. You are. Oh, yeah, we're good friends. And from what he said, I'll get the impression Peter was a bit of a bully. How long has this been going on? Sorry, mate. Touch a nerve there, have I? You know how it is with me and our city. Oh, yeah. He's told me all about it. Little Jimmy Chisholm, <laughs> Little Jimmy Chisholm, everybody! <laughs> You were a 15 year old at Rothering Elementary, and already you had quite the reputation as a ladies' man. Who's this, Peter? <laughs> oh, ladies' man, Peter Clement. With penis so small, you need space telescope to know if it even exists. Ah, oh, fuck a five, Ed. It's your childhood sweetheart, Chelsea Ball. No, it bloody isn't. No, it bloody isn't. For a rock and roll star, this is Ivan Vodovich, and one of my oldest friends, I. <laughs> Chelsea, Ivan, Ivan, uh, let me ask you this. What do you think we could see in Peter way back then that could have predicted his path to household name and now aspiring prime minister? You know, I, I listening before I come on your set, and I hear name Sid, and I think I not heard his name in 25 uh, years. Let's keep it that way, shall we, mate? Jimmy Chisel Path, one. Had a feeling. <laughs> you were like a good night and good fight, always bleeping and snapping at each other. And then one day, poof, he gone. And just like that. And never spoken off again. And that's the way I like it, Eamon. Should we get the next guest now? Oh, wait, first we open Erkistani Special Reserve. Not in the mood, mate. Hey, you okay, my friend? Sorry. Not your fault. Meeting the Bob after. <laughs> Full on the Bob. Ivan! Votovich. Ivan Miladobov, everybody. Close enough. Uh, now, before we bring our next guest on, let's take a look at the classic clip from Just the Job. It's on that monitor there, Peter. Peter, if you'd like to take a look. And that's about two minutes. I'm going for a gander. Get my mind off things. I remember this one, LJ soak for a week. Good choice, Eric. Everything okay? I remember this one, LJ soak for a week. Good choice, Eric. <laughs> Not my choice, if I'm honest. Can we reset, Ooh, A plus, let's go. I'm better than all of you. Because I always get A pluses. Kidding. We think may have found him. Who? Sydney the brother. So? He lives in the capital about ten minutes from the fucking studio. I'm not aware of there being any brother in the script, Derek, so I mean what's the point of us? Eamon, fuck the script. This is the type of TV that people remember. The type that wins TV Nation Awards. TV Nation Awards? Yeah, they're coming up, aren't they? Um yeah, fuck it. Let's send Helen a taxi just in case. Ready on it. Ten seconds, everybody. <laughs> TV fucking nation awards. Going in five, four, three. What fantastic memories there from one of the nation's most beloved TV shows. Now, Just the Job had two successful runs, of course, from 58 to 64, and again from 1972 to 1976. And across many, many of those shows, there was always one man by your side. Oh, no, hang on, wait, he's been on already. We didn't have much back then, but where there's a finger, there's fun, as they say at the confectioners. Give me that woman. Son? 
the pricks have sent us on at the wrong ruddy time. <laughs> yes, that's right. It's a man and a woman who need no introduction, but we're going to give him uh, them one anyway. It's your sidekick. Uh, no, no, it's clearly your parents. certainly in a position to give us a unique insight into this bit of Peter's life. What are the differences, would you say, between the on-screen and off-screen versions of Peter Clement? Not much. They're both feckless ingrains. Martin Clement, you take that back. He's your own flesh and blood. Shut up, woman, blithering on with your nonsense. Well, I think everybody thinks they know our Peter, but no one knows him like his man does. I know him better than he knows his own foreskin, as they say at the bar mitzvah. He was just about passable when he was younger. Not a patch on his brother, but you don't get too like that. We're ever so proud of him. He's like the first cook of the spring, as the airmen say. Well, uh, apparently we have some archive, never-before-seen footage of you, Peter, with your mysterious brother on the just-the-job set. What is this, Eamon? Fucking ambush! Oh, I'll be stewing. All right, Alfie. All right, how is it? Oh, oh my fucking cover. head! Ah, oh, fuck! Most of it, it's in a hotty show in town. Oh, you flatter me. It's that fellow with the Royal Grey. Oh, you cheeky. Where are you sat? Oh, they're just going to slip us in at the back, I think. We didn't have tickets at the back. Play the fuck thing. Oh, don't make a fuss out. Frank! Frank! I want the best seats in the house for my two very special guests. This is my brother, and this. Oh. Welcome. Oh, God, I'm, I'm forgetting my man is Peter. This is the lady I was telling you about. The one that had you enamoured. I, I can see why. I'm not afraid to say, you're probably looking at Mrs. C. Undoubtedly. You seem close. They were. Until he went to that capital and became one of you TV ponces. Martin! Oh, abandoned his brother. He abandoned me. He walked away. Because of what you did, you sneaky little shite! Well, as they say at the laundrette, the past is like a spunky jumper. Jesus, erase you, Grimlicker Christ! Will you shut up, woman, and let me speak? Jimmy Chiselpath, five. Five, six, two. So many men of your generation were conscripted into the army to go to the continent to fight. And it was on those very battlefields that the strangest of friendships was born. Don't worry, darling. We can still get this show on track. Oh, Christ. I think we all know that voice. Uh, at the wrong time in the show, ladies and gentlemen, a woman with the power to destroy us all, Dorothy Hammerman! I'm having a very difficult day, so just be glad I've had time to calm down and be in a more personable mood. However, the organisation on this show is a farrago. Yes, ma'am, it's, it's Dave in the broadcast room. It's just fiddling with the machines. However... I wouldn't say fiddling, I'd say more like meddling. 
carry on. Look here, yes, take this and put it in there. Shall we? Yes, ma'am. Are you okay? Yeah, I just don't like talking about our sick. Well, I know you don't, but minister. suck it up because it's quite wrong that you prime minister. Okay, sweetie? Well, let me ask you this. What's it like? <laughs> let me ask you this. What's it like? The last thing? time that I saw Sydney and Peter together was in 1960 at Peter's wedding. Well, Sydney was sat at the front, and I was just starting out at that time. We all were, but I knew. I had to get an invite to new TV sensation Peter Clement's Wedding of the Year. Oh, hardly. It was a small chapel near Rothering. Yes, well, everything was going fine until the reception when, between songs performed by that dreadful band you booked, the two of you could be heard screaming obscenities in the car park. Well, you came back in after a few minutes as if nothing had happened and grabbed Mrs. C and started dancing the, the Lombardo, if I remember correctly, which, as you know, darling... You always do. Yes, I always do, don't I? <laughs> well, Sydney drove off, and rumour has it that you never spoke again. Is that true? Why are you telling everybody this? Well, it's waiting, darling. It's waiting. So... The question I have for you, Peter, is... I, I usually ask the question. What the hell were the two of you rowing about that night? Sorry, did you say something, Amos? Well, it's just I usually ask the question. Oh, yeah, sorry. Well, what do you want to say? Sorry. Um, no, actually, that was very good, yeah. No, sorry, Dotty, you were... But that conversation were private, and that's how I think it should stay. Uh, it, it's two now, right? I mean six. Yeah, it's six. The Hanelman. The Hanelman. <laughs> <laughs> Your name. There is no private. Still, your funeral or election. Well, it wasn't only just the job that the nation invited into their hearts. Starting in 1977 and running every weeknight for almost six years, you brought your own inimitable Peter Clement style to your eponymously named late-night chat show, Petey. <laughs> Let's take a look at that now. And a couple of minutes back. And a couple of minutes back. Same as before. He's still trying. It's 50-50. Okay. Do you think I did the right thing? Do you think I did the right thing, Harry? Shut it all down for a career in politics. Like you. Of course you did, mate. Reset, everybody. Win. Reset, everybody. I've done a few things over the years, what I can, to help folks out. I've opened my checkbook from time to time, certainly, and I've tried to open Love You More. Fuck the song. Ah, fuck the song. TV Nation Award. What can I do? Uh, go long into the next interview. The ratings are great. Yeah, we can open up. Ten seconds, everybody. Who's on next? Four, three, two, Going in five, four, three. Unforgettable stuff. But while you took all the credit, arguably someone else did all the work, didn't they now? Well, I don't know about taking the credit, but I'm hoping to share in the trust. With the fifth of the bits of your life, it's... Play the music! Soft horse gets to do something. Take a seat, shall we? Lovely, lovely to have you here. Lovely, lovely. 
So, at Peking Ran for nearly six years, tell me, what's your favorite memory from all those shows? Well, my earliest memory of Peter was, was actually from the news. I was a precocious child in the 50s, 1957, was it, when you cycled the length of the country for charity? Can you believe you even did that? Still got the dicky knees to prove it. And then by the time that Petey was on, well, I was very busy with my legal career, so I rarely got the chance to see it. But, uh, but, but I remember the one with the sexy ostrich. Obviously, everyone does. I hate that clip. That man still makes me bloody angry. But I think the thing about that show was that it demonstrated that Peter could talk to anyone, from royalty to roughnecks. Everyone has the best brought out of them by this man. Well, let's hope that's true for you, too. Mrs. Do I go? Mrs. Miss. Saltburn. Salisbury. Uh, let's just go with Julie. Julia. So. What? Do you know about Peter's brother Sydney? We have a brother. We'll talk after. How did you not mention your brother? We will talk after. Okay. We'll talk after. Jesus, I'm ready to do Tucker Christ out. Julius Salisbury, everybody. So to last year, when you surprised the entire nation by announcing you were giving it all up to form your own political party. Because the final bits of your life are always about the future. I remember you slipping me tongue in Gittle Run back in your nan's house. Well, you reckon it were your first kiss. Well, obviously I... that line's not going to work. Ah, uh, let's just bring her out here. Um, I met her earlier. Her name's Edna Cakes or something. Just play the music. taking the time out from your campaign to... Oh, no, 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 not that one. Uh, no, no, uh, oh, uh, do you think Peter Clement is a good fit for politics? No, 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 don't need that one. Um, if we... Hey, Mr. Sidney Clement. Of course I have, Kijo. So have you ever met Sidney Clement? Of course I have, Kijo. Oh, those two, they were like that, inseparable. <laughs> oh, the amiable... Oh, what were the amiable rivals? That's what. I think every single one of these paps, um, the numbers like in a line aren't the exact same. So like, if there's a two, so like if there's a two right there on the top, there will never be a two there. Yeah, that's true. I think that applies to everything else. So by that logic, you could actually do process of elimination and find out for the last path. You can't do two, six, four, one, three. So the only number left is five, right? And if we go on the guide, it's five. Oh, snobbed at least one of them, but most of us had snobbed them both. <laughs> Oh, they used to get into right old ding-dongs over it. <laughs> oh, Peter. <coughs> you really should speak to Sid again. I... He misses you. He needs to apologise to me first. For what he 
he said about my wife at my wedding. Look at us both, eh? We've both done a lot of time. I reckon we're over halfway. Please, don't let it be another 25 bloody years, sweetheart. You'll never forgive me, Chelsea. Would you? <laughs> I'd forgive you anything, but I suppose I'm not a stupid, proud man. We've been together for 25 years. He made me choose. So I chose. Yeah, I know. And that's hard, but if you really think about it, that's a lot more choice than you gave him, isn't it? Right, end the case, everybody. Right, end the case, everybody. <laughs> yeah, right, off you go that way, love. Fantastic. Well, um, we've got a bit of a treat for you and for you. But first, uh, let's take a look at the uh, current Peter Clement. This is a, a bit of footage from you from the debate. Every single study worldwide acknowledges that a society's most stable building block is the family. Well, yes, obviously, we think that family is important too, but just, uh, well, uh, not in the way that you do. We need to put in place policies that encourage families to stay together. Whose family? I beg your pardon? Your family, Jacob, with your estate and your nannies to wipe your ass? Yes, nannies. Or yours, Henry, where your children's education is factored into the budget. <laughs> but my, my parents were self-made. Self-made millionaires, yeah, yeah, no, I, I get it. And if I came from families like yours, I'd probably feel the same way too, but I didn't. I didn't get piano lessons. Our neighbours didn't complain about us because we had piano lessons. They complained about us because we fought. We fought and we fought. My dad tore strips off us with his bare hands and his belt. And we deserved it because we fought too. And there were times... Doesn't matter. What I'm trying to say is that not all families should be encouraged to stay together. There are some cases where families should just simply be left to rot and they're sticking two chubby fingers up to both of you for families first and families forever or whatever it may be because they didn't stay together because they wanted to they stayed together because they had to because the successive policies of both your governments may do that or fucking starve Amazing footage there from the debate. Well, Peter, as you know, normally at this point in the show, we give the guests their picture frame and we roll end credits. But uh, we're changing the format a little tonight and tearing up the script, which uh, <laughs> I have to say on this occasion feels, it actually feels quite thrilling, you know? <laughs> Probably worthy of some sort of, oh, I don't know, a uh, TV Nation Award or something, you know? <laughs> Get on with it. Tonight... We're running over a little because we have a surprise seventh bit of your life. A uh, hidden piece, if you like. You haven't seen him for 25 years. Oh, fuck off! Your brother, Sidney Clemens! All right, our Pete. All right, our Sid. Looks like we're going to have our chat then. Alright, looks that way. stuff, you know. You? This sort of thing, mostly. Running for Prime Minister. Saw so that. Good luck. Mum's backstage with him. Oh, aye. That's good. Oh, 
Now, for God's sake, talk to each other. What did you say to him at the reception? I made a prediction, that's all. You called my word into question, and you insulted me, and you insulted my wife. Maybe you should have thought of that before you stole her from me. It was her choice. It was always that way. Always their choice. We agreed. As children, men... Peter. These are all... Uh, you kind of, I kind of missed it because I took a long fucking time. Uh, so what happened was uh, the stream ended because I ran out of fucking footage. Well, not the stream ended, the recording ended. So you missed it, and I probably missed it as well because I do not remember what happened. I think they had a bit of an argument and then they slowly got along. But we got an A plus. Let's go. We live in a shit state, live in Birmingham. No, we fucking don't. There we go. Alrighty, alrighty. Alrighty, He's such a sweetie when mm -hmm. he's on your TV. It's Where art thou? Reunite Peter Clement with his brother. I was wondering about that achievement because I was like, wait, Peter Clement has a brother. A one, two, three, four. Um, I told you. I... I think everyone's scared of Dorothy Hammerman. Bozeman's scared of her. Uh, well, everyone but Pe but Peter. Um. Eamon Tightly, whatever his name is. Eamon Tightly, or whatever. Alright, we're ending stream now. Fuck it. Rip the person that had to see that stream. Sorry for your innocent mind being ruined by.